Hello and welcome to MFM Reaper. This video will focus on arranged page navigation. Now whether you're recording, mixing or mastering, one of the things you're consistently doing is adjusting, zooming, scrolling, the view in the arrange window. This actually takes up an awful lot of time. So I'm going to show you a system of hotkeys that will give you the view for the tracks that you want every time. I'll demonstrate this in an 8 channel mix and then I'll show you it in a 120 something channel mix. When I'm live engineering I have the bass on channel 1. That means when I lay the kit out from bass drum, snare, etc, that begins on channel 2. Having the bass drum and the bass right next to each other, really important relationship with a mix in or live. So that's why the hotkey system works like this. One will select the basses. I also use the key A, which I'll show you how to program another time, just to select all the tracks to show them. Two is drums. Three is acoustic guitar. Four is electric guitar. Five are keyboards. Six are sort of stage effects, samples, etc. Seven is backing vocals. Eight lead vocals. And A just shows me all the tracks again. Each one of the numbers triggers a custom action that I've written. If I use the MIDI controller, it doesn't do that. So these aren't zooming in to the tracks. These are just selecting the tracks. And that's really how the MIDI controller works. I will show you more about how I use the CSI with that particular controller, the Mackie controller, in other videos. So let's take a bigger mix. This is, I think there's about 60 recording tracks. There's four bass tracks at the top there, potentially. We come down, I've got four acoustic mono guitars, six mono electric guitars or three stereo pairs, quite a few keyboards, quite a few backing vocals and so on. So that's just recording tracks. And the layout I'm using for that is long name. If you'd like to set your range page up to look like this one, look at the previous two videos and it'll explain how to do so. Back to this, one is bass, two is drums, three is acoustic guitar, four is electric guitar, five keyboards, six, you could use contact if you wanted or something else to fill in effects, seven backing vocals, eight lead vocals, nine would be send to effects, so I could send any track to any one of these effects, a few delays and reverbs. And then my final outputs on zero. And if I press A, that'll give me all tracks. So as with the mixing desk, the tracks are summed down into buses. So the idea of 16 into 8 into 2, etc., comes from the mixing desk. To access the buses, I use the hotkey B. And now you can see there's a lot less drum tracks. That's what they're being summed to. The idea being, once you've got your balance between, say, your bass drum in and your bass drum out, when you want to adjust that level, you don't have to turn both of them up and down. You also don't necessarily want to have to EQ them separately uh, for phase issues, and you also don't necessarily want to put effects on them separately and save a bit of processing power. So that's the amount of buses in total. Remember, this is a massive mix, so I'm just demonstrating it to you. That's going to show me all my tracks again. And my buses, A, B, A, B. Simple to remember. Using the modifier key command, I can look at the buses for each one of the track selections. So one is bass, but command one zooms the buses. I know it was in one already because there was space, but if you choose the drums, that's quite a lot of tracks. So now I've got command two just to show me all the buses separately. Same idea for three. Command 3 will zoom the actual output buses. 4 showing me the guitar tracks into the buses, but if I want to zoom the buses, 5 is all the keyboards, Command 5 keyboard buses. And B shows me all the buses. I tend to mix from here once I've set everything up on the tracks and there isn't any problems. If there are any problems, I can go back to the tracks. But it tends to be the buses that I'll be using just to mix from. It's a lot simpler. 
all selectable on the MIDI channel. So 8 is my lead vocals, Command 8 lead vocal buses. 9 is my effects rack as such. I've got 7 effects there, 4 delays, one's a micro pitch, and a few reverbs. I'll explain how I use this copy track at the bottom another time. Zero is going to show me all of my final outputs. So in the vein of the hotkeys, toggling command zero is showing me the master or selecting and unselecting the master. If we want to see that in the track control panel, control zero is doing that because in the hotkey system, control is everything to do with the TCP and tracks. Again, command zero, toggling the master track selected and unselected, and control zero, toggling it visible and not visible in the track control panel. To recap, two shows me the drum tracks are recorded on two. Command two shows me the buses that those tracks are bussed to. Okay, all of my final outputs were on the key zero. What happens there, all the drum buses come into that clean track they also come into the second track below it, which has got a lot of compression, my parallel compression, and then some distortion. Everything that's not drums goes to the music bus. So I've got a final output for the kit, final output for music, so I can balance those. I've also obviously got this mix of clean, compressed, and distorted that I can easily do with faders, be a nightmare with a mouse, into the master kit, into the music output. And then finally I create a master output channel into which the kit and the music go into. There any of the plugins and any of the parameters are really easy to edit. I tend to not touch the master output on Reaper apart from to put monitoring plugins on. Um, when I toggle select this with command zero, notice now that it unselects the track in the track control panel. It didn't do that previously and that can cause a lot of problems. So, if your song's been recorded to a click, this is quite a handy technique. Could be any parameter, I'm just going to demo it with volume. Let's go forward to bar 17. I've shown in a previous video how to make a 4, 8 or a 16 bar loop with hotkeys from the cursor. Now you could create 4 points there, drop them a few dB or raise them. If your song's to a click, you could choose sections like choruses. Go forward to that section. That would be command and right bracket. Create four points, raise a dB. And then maybe your next chorus. Create four points, raise a dB. As keen as I am to show you how I'm using envelopes or how easy I think they are to use, I'll do that in a completely different video. This video is focused on navigation just using tracks. You could also navigate just using items. And we'll combine the two. I'll do another video on that as well. And I'll also be doing quite a lot of videos on MIDI controllers. I use a dedicated controller to control plugins. No external software required, just using Reaper. And anyone can use that and it's very effective. Anyway, if you're interested in any of those things, like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.